Hello everyone, welcome back to our Applied Mechanics lesson. On today's video, on today's lesson, we will be dealing with centroid. So for starters, we have a diagram on screen. I'm just quickly going to come up with some random dimensions to make it work. So we'll say, that's 20. Uh-oh, that doesn't look right. Makes it look dumb. Makes it look dodgy cats. Dodgy cats, baby. Okay. So bear with me. I mean, of course, nothing is symmetrical on here, but that's five. Let's give that 15. Let's give it a common thickness of five. That thickness is five as well. All right. And essentially, we have one, two, three. I'm just labeling them so that it's easy to work with. And essentially, when we are dealing with our centroids, we're trying to understand how does the weight or how do the, the dimensions of this specific body, especially now that we're dealing with a symmetrical one, we're trying to find the most central point of this specific shape. So this is what an eye section would look like. It is symmetrical along the y-axis. Okay, so remember we have x and y so it's symmetrical about the y-axis if you folded it in half it would essentially be symmetrical okay see there's a dimension i've left out there let's give this 30 okay then now we're going to move on to essentially the dynamics of how we're dealing with our centroids so step one you're going to find your areas for all these parts step two you're going to try and find the centroids within the x-axis, so your above x, and then you're going to find them your above y. Then step four, you're essentially going to multiply your area with your above x as well as your above y. I don't know if it's your above x, gamma y, gamma x. The terminology is a thing I just, I've just, I never tried to fuss around it, okay? So you can choose one of two methods to deal with it. It's either you do your steps, you know, your calculations step by step, or you can choose to tabulate them. Of course, since I'm using a screen on here that has no lines, I wouldn't opt for the table one, but I prefer that you guys use the table method so that it's easier to record your information, but I'll show you how to go about it. Um, as we move along. So for now, there will be no table, but to pretend like there's a table, okay? So I'm just going to point out some points that we're going to calculate on there, just so that it's easy for us to keep track. Okay. Then we're going to start off with our areas. So the very first one is this one, so it's 20 times 5. So essentially, you're taking the length times the breadth. We're going to calculate as we move along. So the first one is 20 times 5, and that is 100. The second one, it's this 15 times 5. Okay, 15 times 5. Hey, okay, wait now. 15 times 5. This calculator 75. The third one, um, 5 times 30 or 30 times 5. 30 times 5, and I get 150. Then at the end, you can just get a sum of the areas. 100 plus 75 plus 150. I get 325, and that's in, I decided to use millimeters, so that's in millimeters squared, okay? Then next, we are essentially trying to look for our bar axis. And we did say this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis. So on our diagram as well, we can also show where our common axes are. So this is where we have our x-axis. That's where we have our y-axis, okay? And essentially, the reason why we need to show it in this way is because we need a common point of reference. It'll make sense once we start going into it, okay? So when you look at your very first one, right you need to essentially get the distance from where it is from the common axis to the center within the x-axis okay within the horizontal the center taking into account the horizontal similarly for your second 
as well as your third body okay so you'll notice that all three of them have the same bar x and this is because when you are taking into account the common axes where it starts okay so the common point is to take the far left and the bottom okay so your bar x's you're considering them from all the way on the left then your bar y's you'll be considering from all the way on the bottom okay it will make sense i really hope it makes sense at the end so you'll notice that all three of them have the same bar x which would essentially be your 30 divided by 2 because that is the quickest way to get to it our largest member here has a length of 30 centimeters or millimeters and it is right on the edge so if we're dividing that by half remember your centroid is your absolute center of that specific body okay so all three of them will have a bar x of 15 okay the next we're trying to get a bar y and he said your bar y you are taking with reference to the bottom okay so we'll start off with member number three because it's right at the bottom it's the easiest one so you're trying to get to half of it from the bottom then the second member you're trying to get to half of it from the bottom same as the third member or the first member you're trying to get to half of it from the bottom so member number three it's really easy you're going to take this thickness divide by 2 so 5 divided by 2 2.5 okay let me just delete that because it's a bit confusing okay the first one 2.5 the second one half of it you would take 15 divided by 2 so it's this 15 divided by 2 which gives you up until this point then you are also going to add this 5 on here so 15 divided by 2 is 7.5 plus 5 you get 12.5 12.5 okay then the third one okay there's a mess i made here remember this is number three sorry because i started from the bottom now we're here okay then the third one which is actually our first one is half of this entire thickness plus the rest of the height going all the way to the bottom so five divided by two is 2.5 plus 15 plus five so 2.5 plus 20 is 22.5 22.5 okay and that's essentially it then you could choose whether you want to calculate your area times your bars or you want to use a specific formula for that okay but essentially there is a formula you can use to calculate your centroid about x will be a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3 all divide by the sum of your areas okay if it went all the way up to seven members obviously you would have a7 x7 as the last number on there right then similarly your centroid about the y-axis would be a1 y1 just be careful on here a1 a2 sorry y2 plus a3 y3 all divide by the sum of the areas okay then now we can just substitute see what we mean by a1 by 1 so a1 is 100 x1 is 15 a2 75 x2 15 a3 150 x3 15 all divide by that 325 okay then you can plug and play and calculate on there i end up with 15 centimeters so this just means along the x-axis along the horizontal the absolute center is here by 15 that's where 15 is okay i'll also give you another trick to kind of figure that part out quicker then we're now going to move on to the y so a1 was 100 y1 times 22.5 plus a2 75 y2 12.5 plus a3 150 y3 2.5 all divide by 325 when you plug and play then i end up with a 10.96 well for me it's millimeters i don't know why i put centimeters but you get the idea so essentially on our diagram on our uh, eye section which looks something like that right already by looking at it it was symmetrical within the x-axis so it told you that your centroid falls somewhere on this line 
okay because it's already symmetrical about that line and yes I just went on and messed it up okay just went on and messed it up for no reason all right but already it told you it tells you that your centroid falls somewhere along this line okay so we already know hence that 15 that we dealt with before now we just need to find on this specific plane where does it kind of fall so normally if you have a larger member your centroid will fall closer to the larger member than to the smaller member okay so that 10.96 we've just dealt with here is actually from the bottom so it's five somewhere here so it tells us our centroid is somewhere here okay i hope that helps then i'm just quickly going to show you how you would tabulate your results if you were using a table method so it'll obviously be nice and long column one is where you calculate your areas in millimeters okay then column two you're going to calculate your bar x in millimeters column three your bar y in millimeters column in fact you can do this before you get to your bar y just to keep it consistent so you can do your ax already then the next column you do your bar y then you do your a bar y then when you get your totals you need a total here you don't really need that total there because you won't use it but you can apply it you actually do need it a total here a total here so let's say this is a this is b this is c so how you'd go about finding your bar y you'd essentially say b over a because it would be a total of your a1 x1 a2 x2 a3 x3 it would be a sum of that then it would give you your answer then how you'd go about getting your centroid along the y it would be c over a because it would be a1 y1 a2 y2 a3 y3 okay i hope this makes sense but in case it doesn't you know how to reach me you can comment your question you can email me whichever method works best for you i will see you in the next one adios